Welcome everyone. I am Chris Gore. I have been on a live stream for the last two hours, three hours on the Nerdrotic Nooner, but I am here. I am back. And thank you for joining us on Hollywood on the Rocks on a Wednesday. Today on the show, we're going to talk about a lot of stuff. We have a lot of news. Reviews from the South by Southwest Film Festival in Austin, Texas. Alan Ng has seen Monkey Man. And he's also going to be telling us about other films like Sasquatch Sunset and Dickweed and whatever it takes. Lots of good stuff. Plus, lots of news happening and an interview with the director of a documentary. Stanley Jacobs will be joining us uh, talking about a film called Pitch People, which is about, you know, those late night shows where they have people pitching weird products. Stanley made a documentary about all the people who are part of those late night shows. Very exciting stuff. I can't wait it because you're here. We're going to take your comments, questions, lots of it. So hopefully Gary raids us. Hopefully Gary raids the show. So let's get things started. Let's get things kicked off because we're a little late today. Not that late. We could, it could have been worse. It could have been worse. So um, let's start the show. Wait, where's that thing that I'm supposed to click? It's this thing right here now. Okay, I don't even see what there's no out. You know, I hate to say it, but helping others makes you feel pretty good. I would never say this to her face, but she is a wonderful person and a gifted artist. Why, why wouldn't you say that to her face? So. Alan, Alan, Alan. Alan, 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 Alan. Hey, what? Hey, what are you uh, doing, man? I'm helping others <laughs> and not telling them that they're great artists. <laughs> Did you? Okay, have you gained a little weight from eating barbecue in Texas? Yeah, I want to know. know. Uh, as as gratitude for the place I was staying at, I uh, paid for a nice barbecue dinner during the during the Oscar stream. So uh, yeah, we oh, had. Some Oh my gosh, so, that was so good. So you paid for it or I'm reimbursing you? Uh, I think you've already reimbursed me for it. <laughs> I don't care. No, that's yeah, great. I mean, no, I appreciate it. Yeah, I mean, we we did pretty good budget-wise this year. Uh, oh, know. no, that's great. No, I'm just happy we're, you're able to go, and and uh, I can't wait to hear about the movies. Yeah, that was wait. fun. Yeah. All right, and then let's come back, and you, my, my studio's a shambles. Uh, we were helping a friend of my daughter's uh, one night, and so... This is what I find out. And so uh, apparently Kermit is giving us the finger. It happens. All right. right. Let's see who's here. Let's see who's in the chat. New members, Jake Hansen, Philip Karchman, Karkman, and Jenny Karkman. Oh, wow. Maybe are you related? Thank you for becoming members. We appreciate it. Go to the members section. We have all sorts of exclusive videos, including a conversation we had yesterday with WGA screenwriter Jim Agnew, who basically did a whole talk about how to get an agent, how to write a script, tips on script writing, really a deep dive. We're going to be doing more of those deep dives about all areas of independent film because uh, we really want to help up and coming filmmakers. Sean Hu uh, sends in 2742 and says, I miss Great Disney, Treasure Island, 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea, Mary Poppins. The Black Hole, The Rocketeer, Hocus Pocus, The Three Musketeers, The Santa Claus, and National Treasure, to name a few of their live action movies. I think everybody misses mm -hmm. old school Disney. Um, Eric K for five says, Chris will be here soon. He's having trouble getting off. Maybe Gary and X-Ray Girl can help him. Oh, did Eric they help goes, him get off? <laughs> <laughs> Eric K goes on to say, Alan will save us. And Sleeping Noble became a new member we appreciate you. That's great. J uh, Jackson Cagle for two says, thanks, Film Threat. Watch Party was fun. That's great. Yeah, no, the Oscars Watch Party, I mean, it was in it was like over five hours, but oh. we had a blast. <laughs> and drunken Robert Meyer Burnett. I think Robert, <laughs> like me, I don't drink as much as I used to. I mean, it might seem like I drink just because I, I tend to. I post when I'm like, ah, I'm doing something fun, but, you know. I don't drink as much as I used to, so maybe it has more of an effect on me. And Rob was smashed. <laughs> smashed. I don't know he kept denying he was. The yeah, night. when you deny, 
you are smashed. Um, some other, I mean, I mean, you need to deny it five or six times. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What can I say? Um, and here we go. Sifax says, is there still spots open for the film threat meetup? I'm considering going a day early on Tuesday, April 9th. We are doing a meetup at the, uh, millennium fandom bar <laughs> Vegas. It's at 7 PM. If you go to the community tab on Film Threat now, there's a direct link to the form to RSVP. Ms. P. Coffee will be putting the link in the description for this episode. We've only got about 150 slots or so. Uh, we're going to give Blu-rays away to everybody. We're going to have Film Threat giveaway stuff. Um, uh, let's see. Alan, myself, and Dante will be there with a coordinated wardrobe. <laughs> I bought those T-shirts. Not going to say, but they'll, it'll make for interesting photo ops. We will be there. Uh, you must RSVP to go. Please do not RSVP unless you're Please. actually attending. Please. We want an exact head count. Um, if it's a plus one, cool. If it's just you, just RSVP for one. We want as many people as possible to go. And if we go over that, maybe we'll start a wait list. But go there now. Please RSVP. Uh, before it gets filled, Sifax, thank you so much for Better that. Way. Were you were you a part of In Sync? Because you look an awful lot like I. Joey that's from my early days when I was in a boy. Who that? I don't. know. I, I think that might have been Leo Cody who made that. Thank you, Leo. JTBRX says Alan gained weight. No wonder my tablet got heavy when Alan appeared on the screen. Cheers from Germany, Chris says Lord Castle. Paul and uh, or Hale, sorry about that, Lord Castle Hale. Heinlein says, I hope Alan has cowboy hat on. Infamous. Anonymous says, Chris has finally left the nooner. Yeah, it took a while. <laughs> and uh, Lord Thoth says, like, share, subscribe, hit the bell for notifications, sign up as a member, and join us on Discord. Lord Thoth, thank you. Shout out to you. Hope you're going to make it to the meetup. Of God. But I love, I always love giving away stuff for free which is why we're doing a whole Blu-ray giveaway. We're doing like, I don't know. It's just, I love giving stuff away. I'm going to have just other film threat related stuff that's free. Um, Alan and I will be signing stuff. Uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. So thank you for that. Wait, I'm going to stop sharing that screen, but check it out. RSVP now. A um, couple of news stories. Let's get to them. One of them is particularly tragic for me. So um, I'm just going to get right to it and share with this. Um, here we go. It is. Uh, so, God, I, I mean, I, yeah, I you've heard about this on the Nooner. Uh, we talked about it on the Nooner, but. Um, yeah. I haven't read the article yet, but yeah, this is. Uh, yeah, this is uh, big Olivia news. Munn, Olivia Munn, U.S. actress, shares breast cancer diagnosis um, so this article, basically, um, she revealed all this information, um, that it's, uh, she said the cancer was aggressive and fast moving, but was caught with enough time that I had options. So my best goes to her. People have been asking me about it. Um, you know, it's, I'm, she, I'm sure she's public now about it because she's past the point, um, where it's an issue, so, um, you know, all my love and respect to her, uh, you know, and I'm sure that um, she's always been very philanthropic in terms of, you know, causes, uh, you know, not so much on the woke end, but just sort of things that we can all get behind. I think we can all get behind anything that helps uh, uh, in, in the area of breast cancer. So I'm going to guess that she's going to use it as a way to bring awareness, um, you know. So uh, she did a stop Asian hate campaign. So she was very involved in that and uh, much love and respect to her and her family. Most of her, mostly her Instagram. Um, I, I wouldn't say that she's like, I mean, I wouldn't say I, she's, I'd say her focus right now is on her family. Her partner yeah, is John. Baby. Yeah. Yeah. She's got a baby. And if you look at her Instagram, so stuff with her baby and going out and my God, I think she is, is one of those things where you, work with someone who's very beautiful. I mean, she's been, she was in like Maxim and Playboy and all the magazines at the time when I worked with her at G4. And um, he's even better looking in, in real life. She's absolutely stunning. 
And maybe it's just because I, I think that she's even better looking now. Um, so there you go. Um, and somehow she got John Mulaney. So you know what? Uh if they're happy, <laughs> yeah. it's it's a it's that's a you know, happily ever after. That's all I'll say. Yeah. So my best to her and um, you know, for being public about this too. And I, you know, I hope she'll use that to just bring awareness. It was detected early, so she had options, and that is, you know, just something to remember. And cancer, um, F cancer, F cancer, yeah. truly. I mean, I've, I've never shared this publicly, but uh, my wife has been uh, battling cancer for breast cancer for, uh, I think, ten years now, yeah. and um, I've mentioned it just because the the medication and the treatments today are so much better than they were ten years ago. Yeah. And, uh, you know, that's it's extended her life. And, uh, you know, you know, uh, so nothing but the best for Olivia Munn. Uh, I'm glad, uh, you know, they caught it early and uh, they're, you know, it, it's not the death sentence that that it used to be years ago. Yeah. So sorry to kick off the show with somber news here, but Alan has a secret. Well, actually, you gave me something that, that you wanted me to open on. Uh, on yeah, let's see. On stream. Yeah, hold on. Okay, all right. Light, all right. Lighten the mood here. Yeah, you gave me this uh, tote bag from uh, Storytellers. Uh, the <laughs> sure. Storytellers box. No, the, the, Mammoth, the Film Mammoth Film Festival. It's from the Mammoth yeah. Film Festival. So, yeah, let me, uh, let me crack this baby open. Uh, let me see. Wait, did you not pre-open it? No, you said do it, do it here, so I'm not sure what's in it. Uh, I hope but, you've got uh, like well, a knife or scissors. Uh, no, oh no, it's uh, they didn't tape it for some reason. Oh but, good. Uh, let's let's take a look. Uh, I got a letter from YouTube. <laughs> I think it's the same one you read. Uh, yeah. Yeah. All right. Let's see. That was last and, year, actually. Yeah. Oh, what's this? It's um. It's a uh, matzo bread. Someone Stop it! Hit, you... Someone hit matzo bread in this box. Elijah. Okay. So, anyways, uh, if you look up here, there we go. There's the plaque. Okay. Uh, there you go. You, you opened it. You pre-opened it. <laughs> oh my god. Hey. Uh, so there it is. It'll come down the shelf uh, next. On oh, Friday. that's great. Well, uh, congratulations. Um, I couldn't have done it without you. Um, and without also Ms. P coffee, Glenn, Absolutely. Uh, you know, our producer and just like, just, and, and the audience could not have done it without you. We appreciate and, and it. And the Walt Disney company. And I want to thank Bob Iger for us getting north of a hundred thousand. That mm -hmm. certainly helped. Yeah. So. But, but uh, seriously, uh, thank you to, uh, everyone watching to, uh, everyone who subscribed definitely. I mean, literally, we couldn't have done it without you. And I am eternally grateful. And I don't think we thank you guys enough. Yeah. So thank you so much for, for being with us uh, on this very long journey. Uh, two okay. years, over two years. Yep, over two years. We've been over, well, look. We, Actually, we did it in less than two years. But well, well, we, well, you and I started like, let's just live stream twice a week. Mm -hmm. What is this? Try to make videos because none of our videos really got traction. Yeah. We were. I was doing interviews and you were doing reviews with someone else. And like, it'd be like, we could never like some things we get a thousand views and some things we get like 40, 40 mm -hmm. views. So it was a little, um, all over the map. And once we just started live streaming, I think that, um, you know, that's when things yeah. kind of took off. Well, it, it, it was so. started when you were doing film courage, <laughs> you were... right? Film courage got us a bump. <laughs> Film Courage yeah. got us a bump. And they were getting like 100,000 views on your videos. And, and I'm like, and then we just got we doing that for us. <laughs> started getting attention. Exactly. By the way, when so. DEI comes after farts, you know it's over. What are you talking about? Why with the laser pointer? <laughs> oh, okay. what was happening with that? Um, anyways, all right. Hopefully. Gary's probably is Gary still doing a stream Can other can someone else check is he still doing the stream because we've got like first of all appreciate we've got 230 yeah, people don't watching complain about the people who are here on YouTube I'm not complaining I'm just saying Gary's still doing his thing obviously you've made your choice you've made your choice um and you're here and we appreciate all 242 people is that Piers Morgan bump 
the Piers Morgan bump. That's what he's getting. Hey, Alan, um, I, I'm going to talk about Three Body Problem later in the show, which is yeah. the new show from Benioff and Weiss, the uh, creators or the showrunners for Game of Thrones. I have a lot to say about it, and I'm going to give an early reaction, but we've got some South by Southwest Film Festival reviews. Before we get to specific movies, mm -hmm. Alan, can you give us your just general... Um, and I haven't even watched all the stuff on the yeah. on the um for the members only. You posted a lot on members only of your adventures, eating barbecue, out of the theater reaction for members only, lots of video in Austin, Texas. Give us your overall impressions before we pivot to reviews. Yeah. Um, it was, you know, I've been I was talking to a bunch of people. First of all, um, this year got recognized a lot. And uh, you know, it's you know, I it been doing this for for a film threat for like five years now and it's like no one no one ever recognizes me and now it's it, it happens a lot so thank you to everyone i ran into um you know we talked a lot about film festivals you and i chris about their usefulness i, I will say that i think uh, of the film festivals we attend and try to attend i think south by southwest is the best one in, in terms of uh, a good blend of really cutting edge Hollywood films, but at the same time, a lot of good independent films, um, you know, and, uh, you know, and uh, I shoot love Texas too. Uh, a lot of good food out there. Um, and uh, the other thing is they've got their act together. They know what they're doing. They, they've got the yeah. system down. Yeah. Um, everything I wanted to see got, I got to see it. Uh, and, uh, you know, they, they set expectations. Well, um, only one mishap with a bus, but that was about it. <laughs> well, I love Austin, Texas, mm -hmm. um, in spite of the fact that it's kind of a, you know, some parts of it are not so great. It's Sixth Street. It's the bars. It's the Chugging yeah. Monkey. It's the Jackalope. It's Voodoo Donuts. Hopefully that's still there. Um, just everything about that Sixth Street vibe um, mm -hmm. is great. And the audiences at South By are very, very, they've been well-trained in the sense that they they love small indie movies. Now, there is a lot of like, you know, there'll be some Hollywood movies like Monkey Man played there, mm -hmm. which is Lionsgate. We're going to get your review in a bit. Then we've got, um, you know, we've also got uh, The Fall Guy premiered there, which is coming out in May, which mm -hmm. is fine. Um, so you get the big Hollywood, but they do not forget these smaller indie movies. They even have like a program where it's like Texas filmmakers. But it's yeah. not without its problems. I'll say this. Um, the festival itself has gotten uh, a, a little, some people might say a little woke. Let me just share a story here. We're going to talk about this. It is um, a speaker was canceled. A, a speaker's panel was canceled, which was a, a, a panel about cancel culture, which doesn't make a lot of sense to me. I'm going to share a screen here um, with this. Uh, it's an article. It says, I was canceled by trendy South by Southwest Film Festival bosses for criticizing cancel culture. This is my problem. Um, if you go to these official South by Southwest YouTube channel, literally their videos get 40 views. It sucks. Mm -hmm. But the panelists are, they really have gone out of their way. Meghan Markle was there. AOC <laughs> has been there. They've really begun to suck up to, um, you know, more mainstream types of speakers, to people, to politicians. I do not like this trend. I think this is a really bad trend. I'm not in favor of it. And certain people are just not welcome when it comes to these panels. Yeah, and I, think, I feel that's the thing I take issue with. So we well, can, we, it's sorry, it's not that ahead. you can't have it's not that you can have politicians. It's not balanced. It's yes. not balanced in any way. Uh, it leans one direction, and and which is fine. I have them, but balance it off. Uh, and and that's definitely not what you're getting here. Because uh, I have some things to say about this, but go ahead and go through the article. I'm going to go through uh, briefly on the article. We will put the link to the article in the description. But here it goes. This is written by Ricky Schlott. Uh, Ricky, I assume a female version uh, of the spelling R I K K I. It appears that I've been canceled for speaking up about cancel culture. Organizers of the South by Southwest Film Festival declined to approve my participation in a panel of speakers. The reason 
Concerned that I dare to speak out against cancel culture. An email from South by Southwest staff shared with me by the panel's organizer reveals the festival was hesitant to approve my participation because my commentary has been focused on the idea of cancel culture. Oh, the irony. I've spent the past several months talking to audiences about my book, The Canceling of the American Mind. Culture undermines trust and threatens us all, but there is a solution. Although my book is full of cancel culture horror stories and countless speaker disinvitations, I wasn't quite prepared to weather one myself, let alone be canceled because I've been critical of cancel culture. And I wasn't about, I wasn't even going to talk about cancel culture. I'm sure, sure the um, subject of the panel wasn't necessarily about cancel culture. There's a lovely photo of um, Ricky uh, here. We're seeing on screen uh, the panel of speakers, which was slated for this Saturday was supposed to be a discussion on the power of independent voters to end polarization. Why exactly my commentary on cancel culture has anything to do with my status as an independent voter is beyond me. Funnily enough, I received an email with the subject line. Ricky was not approved for South by Southwest just as I was about to speak at Cornell university about cancel culture. Um, in any case, he goes on again. We'll put the uh, link in the description. Alan, what are your thoughts on this? Yeah, I mean, uh, that other than the films, Ooh. all the uh, all the panels and topics of the panels were very uh, very political and very uh, leaning in in like I said, one direction. Right. And um, you know, I just it was like uh, maybe I'll maybe I'll catch a panel here or there. And I'm like, mm -hmm. no, no environment, blah blah blah. You know, it's just, you know, what they call the echo chamber. Uh, it, it just, you, you kind of know what you, they're going to talk about before you go into the panel. So the point is, then why go to the panel? You know, uh, it's <laughs> preaching to uh, one choir and not the other. Um, I will tell you. Uh, okay, so so at South by Southwest, uh, one thing missing was the land acknowledgement. There was no land acknowledgement. Well, that's uh, a step every, forward. Yeah. But uh, what what started each session, each film was basically the daily recap. And, uh, you know, part of it was, you know, they have a big Hollywood movie show up. And so they'll, they'll give you clips and little, uh, um, you know, little clips of what the, the stars were saying. Um, and then, uh, and then <laughs> Megan Markle yeah, comes on screen and it's about this panel that she was on. Uh, this is and, the problem. I have. I, I, you know what? I have no problem with Megan Markle being there. Mm -hmm. I have no problem with AOC going to South by Southwest. But if you're going to have AOC, you better have Ted Cruz or someone on the opposite end of the political spectrum. And mm -hmm. if all ideas are not, or, or, or all sides and a, a, a true inclusion is not a part of South mm -hmm. by, then it is politically compromised and it is one direction. And that is bad, not just for South by Southwest. It's also bad for the country. And there are so many bad ideas that have infiltrated you can talk about wokeness all you want. These are just bad yeah. ideas. If you if you only acknowledge one side, that is a problem. And mm -hmm. I want to say thank you to the 1,400 plus people that are watching oh, hey. live. We've been raided by Nerd Rod. <laughs> so thank you for that. Um, we're going to get to, we got a lot of movies to talk about and yeah. uh, we've got a few more news okay. stories. But So, um, so let me, let me, let me say, so, okay. So they, they, they show the, the stars and they show Meghan Markle. Uh, and they kind of balance it off, uh, social justice, environment, and, and you just kind of know the direction. Of it. And then uh, the last day, Monday, where I saw Monkey Man, uh, I was at the Paramount Theater seeing three basically high-profile films. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, they started with the daily recap. And, and they run generally about a minute and a half uh, to two right. minutes. Right. Uh, the one that morning, uh, a third of it, the back third of those da the daily recaps was devoted to Dylan Mulvaney. Um and 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 everything she had to say, and uh, and I, you know, it's like okay, you know, I, I kind of expected this thus far, uh, and I will tell you, um, when the when the daily recap ended, uh, it was like a pin dropped in the theater. You know, you had this, you have a packed theater. Every screening was packed, and they play this thing ends on Dylan, a uh, pin drop, dead silent. Oh my god! Yeah, yeah. There's no one, you know, no one. I hate to say it, but uh, only only the liberal elite really cares what Dylan Mulvaney has to say. Yeah. Uh, the average person, probably not. Most likely not. Yeah. Um, quick news story here before we go to your South by Southwest reviews, including Monkey Man, which that trailer, that looks 
pretty hot. Oh, the yeah. trailer is awesome. Well, Deb yeah, and I have something. No, no don't uh, say anything. Doesn't I won't that, say anything, but I'm saying there's there's a thing that happened at the screener, at the screening that you're gonna find of particular interest. Oh, don't say anything. Yeah, yet. Okay, I won't say anything. Real, real quick here. Where am I? My By the way, uh, like and subscribe uh, to the Film Thread channel. Thank you for being here, and thanks, Gary, for sending everyone over for the raid. And uh, your your tendency is greatly and, appreciated. And, and thanks, Gary, for giving me five minutes to eat while <laughs> I was on your show. No, I love Gary. Um, Nicholas Cage's comments on National Treasure 3 and Disney. This is a story that is interesting because okay. can, can, I, can, I preface this? Can, I, can I preface this? Okay. So uh, the first D23 event I ever attended, uh, one of the greatest days of my life, um, the opening session was the Walt Disney feature, feature films. And uh, they brought out Johnny Depp as Jack Sparrow. He was in full regalia. They brought out the freaking Muppets on a bus uh, Miley Cyrus there was there to sing uh, The Climb, which was in her movie. Um, and then they bring out Nicolas Cage saying, uh, here's here's Nicolas Cage, star of National Treasure. And he was there for, for uh, Sorcerer's Apprentice. And uh, the guy who was running live live action at that time, uh, he, he's on stage with Nicolas Cage. And he says to him, uh, Mr. Cage, uh, will you do National Treasure 3? And Nicholas Cage responded, yes, I will. Okay, so there's your preface to this story. Wait, okay, no, but wait a second. Two two pieces of info. They announced National Treasure 3 starring Nicholas Cage. Yes, at, num- at, D, at the first D23. Okay, Expo. and number two, a Sorcerer's Apprentice movie with Nicholas Cage. Yeah, you that didn't was see that a real one? that was a real project that's being that it, was developed. it came out in theaters. It, it came did, out. did it come out? It came out. It came out that year because that's what he was there to promote. He plays oh Yensen. I don't even remember that movie. Yeah, he he plays Yensen. No one remembers that movie. It wasn't that good. <laughs> oh my! I can't believe it exists, and I'm not even aware of it. Oh yeah, my god! You can find it on Disney Plus. Oh my god! That sounds <laughs> terrible. Okay, yeah, so they well, announced it. Well, yeah, but, but what... just saying that uh, the talk of a National Treasure three uh, originated from from that. Okay, so let's read the comments real quickly from N- Nicolas Cage. A Nick, the National Treasure 3's chances get a blunt response from Nicolas Cage. Uh, so here we go. Nick Cage addresses the chances of National Treasure 3 after years of the treasure hunting sequel being rumored to happen. Um, uh, let's cut right to the chase because basically he says um, he was doing an interview and he said bluntly, no. There is no National Treasure 3. Uh, yeah, read and, that and, box. Read that box. That's his oh, quote. Oh, the box. The, the, box the gray says, box. Here's his uh, quote. Yeah. He says, oh, here we go. So, see, you're the one that brings these things up, and they go out, and they eclipse everything else. No, there is no National Treasure 3. If you want to find treasure, don't look at Disney, okay? It's not there. <laughs> That's a terrible Nick Cage. Never, <laughs> I should never have done that. But it's a um, great quote from Nick Cage. <laughs> that's the quote. Okay, so don't, yeah. If you want to find treasure, don't look at Disney. Okay, it's not there. I feel like a lot of actors feel much more emboldened to speak out against nonsense at Disney, which is very interesting, um, if you ask me. Yeah, I mean, we've so, talked about uh, Dakota Johnson and... Uh, and her comments of you know this this idea of writing films on by by committee, uh, and yeah. That, you know, and, th- and that I think a lot of these stars are starting to get the idea that you can sign on to a Disney or Star Wars project, but you're not guaranteed its quality, and you're stuck, you know, and uh, and you have to do it. Okay, some quick super chats here. Uh, real quick, and then we're going to get to your reviews and uh, three body problem. Uh, Helios ending for 10 Canadian. The woke can't write good characters because to them, the identity is the character. Mm-hmm. Bingo. Yep. I have two words bingo. Uh, that's how narrow minded and bigoted they are. They're everything they claim to be against. That is 100% true. And Mexican Iron Man says, yes, Gary is streaming and gifted five film threat memberships. Thank you so much, Mike. Mexican Iron Man, stand-up guy. Love hanging with that guy. And Joseph D- Joseph's Dots 
sent me the coolest thing ever. I'll show it off on Friday. The package did arrive. And if you look very closely, you'll see uh, William oh. Shakespeare is wearing a chain, a film threat chain, as is R2-D2. So now I just need two more for Alan and I. Yeah, Joseph, wow. These are the, it is the coolest thing ever. I know you said, oh, I'm going to send you some chains. I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sounds cool. Yeah. It is, I am, my mind is blown. They are so cool. How do I get a couple more of those? Yeah. Dude, thank you so much. I'm going to show it off on Friday. I just, it just arrived. I know. That's so, so awesome. He sent you two. And yeah. You and they were both of them on R2D2 and Shakespeare. They're perfect. Yeah. They're perfect. So yeah, hopefully we can get two there. more. They look great there. Hey, look at Kermit over here. Uh, I think he's giving you his response. I don't know. I don't know is that the finger? Doing. Yeah, he's giving you the Anyways, thank you, Joseph Stotts. I'll email you, and uh, I, I want to show it off because it's. I just. I. I thought it was just funny. I just thought I would throw it on because I always. I always change something in my background every show, but some people notice, some people don't. Um. So there you go. Thank you so much. All right, let's get to it. Uh, we've. Uh, uh if you're a member of the channel, we have five new members. Go to the members only. And you'll see all the videos of Alan in Austin, Texas, and our most recent interview with Jim Agnew. He's a WGA screenwriter who talks about how to make, uh, uh, how to write a screenplay, um, how to get an agent, a uh, lot of detail. We're going to be doing more deep dive indie film discussions, but it's going to be, they're going to be for members only. And we want to hear from our members, what other topics do you want us to cover? Producing, fundraising, distribution. We're going to talk about all of it. Uh, per your request. So what, what do you want to talk about first, Alan? Oh yeah. Maybe we should save uh build up to monkey man. Yeah. So what do you want to talk about first? Okay. So let's, uh, we can go with, uh, we can go with sing sing first. All right. Uh, sing sing. I thought it was a documentary, but it's a drama stars, uh, Coleman Domingo as, uh, as a, basically, uh, it's, he's a prisoner, uh, at sing sing. Uh, he was committed his character was committed, uh, com incarcerated for a crime he didn't commit, uh, a murder, basically. And uh, in order to pass the time, uh, he creates basically a theater program at Sing Sing. Uh, and the whole thing is about uh, him. He they just did Midsummer's Night, uh, a mid a summer, well, the, the Shakespeare one, a Midsummer's Dream. Is that the right run? Uh, too okay, much barbecue whatever. makes it uh, difficult for <laughs> words to come out of your mouth, apparently. I know. Well, apparently, I don't know Shakespeare, uh, and I don't. That's okay. And so, uh, That's okay. so the so the prisoners they they decide let's do a comedy next, and uh, they decide they want to what what kind of comedy you want to do, and they decide to do a mashup. Uh, but the the movie really is about this community of of, uh, of prisoners who um, basically start do a uh, do theater. And uh, they bring in this director from the outside. He puts them through all these games with the idea of making them vulnerable, making them open, and and a friendship is built. And then and then by the end of the movie, you realize a this is a true story, uh, kind of. Uh, B everyone except Coleman Domingo is, was a alumnus alumnus of this program. Uh, and uh, wait, wait a sec, wait a sec. Are you saying Coleman Domingo did prison time? No, I'm saying everyone but Coleman Domingo were. Oh, everyone were but. I'm oh, sorry, sorry. I alumnus understood. of this program. Oh, yeah, I mean, Coleman Domingo is there to basically be the emotional and the the dramatic heart of this of of this uh, piece, and uh, he, the guy he plays uh, plays a minor character in the in the movie, and uh, it, it to me, but the reason I like this movie so much is it is just this story about redemption, uh, the idea that. No matter where you are in life, and no matter how, uh, you know, Coleman Coleman's character was there because he was wrongly accused of a of a murder. The others were there because they did bad things, and right. that this program uh, taught them basically got them, you know, got them to really discover themselves, uh, find ways of portraying characters, and uh, this program called RTA uh, Rehabilitation Through Arts. Um, it boasts a 3% re recidivism rate for people who are part of it. So, you know, it's, for the most part, if, if you're part of this program and you go back out into the real world, you ain't coming back uh, to Sing Sing, that's for sure. Um, and again, it, it was not only performed by the uh, actual alumni of this program, 
but it was written by them as well because uh, you see a lot of their stories, a lot of their experiences within it. And and again, you know, stories, it just kind of, when we think about, you know, the incarcerated, we think about a group of incarcerated. But when you look at this story, you realize that they are individuals who want to get back to their families, who have to come to grips with the crimes they committed. Um, Coleman's character, uh, th there's a piece of evidence that was found that exonerates him, but the uh, but the clemency board wouldn't accept the, the evidence. And so now, you know, the, the guys who actually did something and were paroled are leaving Sing Sing sooner than he is. And uh, and they were there, uh, I think. Yeah, I posted the Q&A uh, on the member channel, so you can watch that. And uh, it's a very uplifting, inspiring film. Cool. All right. All right. Let's move on to, uh, let's do dickweed. <laughs> oh my God, dickweed. Yeah. Dickweed. Okay. All right. So dickweed is a true life, uh, a true life crime documentary. Uh, one of the main reasons I like this movie is because the crime took place in Orange County. And uh, when they, when they uh, go and visit the scene of the crime, it's like, oh, I know exactly where that is. Uh, there's, a, there's a moment where they're introduced, they're, they're interviewing uh, the, the victim who's kind of, uh, you know, in shadows, so you can't recognize him. Uh, but in the window behind him is this building. It's like, oh, I know where that building is. Um, but let's get into the story. The story is basically two people um, who, uh, who were kidnapped in the middle of the night, uh, dragged out into the desert, uh, and told that they want a million dollars. Where's the million dollars? He apparently has a million dollars. And uh, he doesn't have a million dollars, not even close. And uh, they said, well, if you're not going to give me a million dollars, I'm going to cut your dick off. And um, when he couldn't give them the million dollars, they cut his dick off. And, uh, and then they throw the dick away. And, uh, and we're, they, oh, well, yeah. we're losing viewers as we speak, <laughs> I think now. Yeah, I know. Everyone's grabbing their crotches right now. Um, oh, my God. So the, the, the documentary is about the investigation of this crime. Uh, and, uh, Basically, it was it's surrounded kind of the Orange County weed industry. And if you lived in Orange County, you know, it's been kind of a there's a lot of weed in Orange County, a lot of dispensaries and a lot of them legit, a lot of them not so much. And uh, they kidnapped the guy thinking that he had money uh, and uh, he didn't. And so they did what he did. And um, but the problem was, is that uh, it was almost impossible trying to investigate this. And they ultimately do. They ultimately catch the guy, uh, and uh, and that is a story in of itself. The guy who did it, uh, insane. He's crazy, uh, sociopath. And they interview him. And so uh, this is this is just one of those weird ones. And and the nice thing about this, what I like about this one, it's a very much an independent documentary, but it looks just like anything you'd see on Netflix, on HBO, uh, and and Showtime. It's it's just a well done, well told. Um, the the uh, Orange County uh, investigator and the Orange County DA are characters uh, within themselves. Uh, the DA is this woman who is just takes no Fs uh, and uh, suffers no fools. And she uh, she lets you know it. And it's just all over there. So Wait that's a sec. A, T takes no Fs. Is it takes no Fs or gives no Fs? Gives no, gives no Fs. Gives no Ss or takes no Fs? Uh, it, isn't it? I'm who just gives, messing with yeah. you. I'm just messing with you. Well, who gives a fuck? Uh, <laughs> where, where are you we? Rarely swear. Even into you rarely swear. You rarely swear, man. Yeah, you pressured me into it there, Gore. <laughs> <laughs> it's all good. Um, all right. Uh, here, we'll, 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 let's see. Uh, I think I talked about last time, Secret Mall Apartment. Uh, no, Ooh, no, tell us about it. Oh, you want to tell you? Okay. So this is one of those where I got recognized. The director uh, recognized me and uh, wanted me to know that uh, how much he appreciated my review of his last movie, which was Lily Topples the World, which is about uh, a girl who's one of the top uh, domino artists out there. He did this movie, um, basically takes place, uh, there was back in the early 2000s, um, Providence, Rhode Island, uh, the depressed area used to be a big industrial town, big mill town. Um, it, developers came in and basically uh, demolished a bunch of mills uh, and these mills were inhabited by artists who were kind of squatting there. Um, and they built this giant mall. And one of the artists, Michael Townsend, uh, decided that, you know, his art is going is kind of this temporary type art. He's going to go in and build an apartment 
or no, his the challenge was that he was going to stay in the mall as long as he could uh, live there, basically. And while living there, he found this open space, this massive space between uh, the the curvature of the outside of the mall and then the mall proper, and uh, realized that he could actually uh, build an apartment there. And um, so he gets a bunch of his students, eight of his students, and they build an apartment. Uh, they uh, he, they have to climb this tall rickety uh, this tall ladder steel ladder. They got sofas up there. They got a dining room table. They got a couple of, uh, of china closets. Uh, they had they were able to wire electricity into it. Uh, so they had PlayStation. They were playing PlayStation all the time. And then in order to kind of hide the fact that there was a an apartment there, they they realized they need to build a cinder block wall. Uh, and uh, and so they smuggled um, they smuggled uh, cinder blocks and cement into this small space uh, and built an entire apartment and uh, it went on for four years and uh, and it's a pretty interesting story uh, it's it it's a prank movie in a way but it's also about this guy Michael Townsend who uh, is an artist who who basically does tape art and, and most of his artwork is temporary meaning he puts it up. If you see it, you see it. If you don't, you don't. And then, you know, time will will wear away at that art. And it's uh, it's kind of a half about him and half about this other one uh, about about the prank. And uh, you know, this is uh, this is a very fascinating documentary, uh, just from the story itself and the guy himself as well. One of my favorite prank films I've ever seen. Mm -hmm. I saw at South by Southwest more than twenty years ago. I'll never forget this movie at the original Alamo Draft House in downtown Austin, Texas. It's a little short documentary. It's about a guy who hated his family. He hated his family and he was going back to visit his family for Christmas. So he was going to make a fruitcake. So he gets this big aluminum bowl and he's making all the stuff for the fruitcake. And he goes out in the street and he takes like dirt and puts it in the, the, the fruitcake. And he's going up to homeless people who stick their hands in it and spit <laughs> into the fruitcake mix. Yeah. He does all this stuff, and the entire audience is howling and freaking out. And all this gross stuff goes into it. He goes and you see him bake the fruitcake. And then he goes to visit his family and they're all like, oh, good to see you. Oh, and he brings the fruitcake. It is like one of the, the audience oh. lost their minds. Oh, they're all God. going, whoa, and he put, gets the fruitcake and he puts it up on the counter and his whole family's there and you just see him sitting there like this. It is that now, I have a theory that I actually don't think that the fruitcake his family ate is the one that you saw all that stuff happen. It's just, it's just my personal opinion. But it... I, I more than 20 years ago, I saw this short film. I forget the name of it, but I'll never forget it. It was a great prank. And I love that kind of creativity Yeah, that it's just like, you know, I mean, look, he could have just like did all this stuff. And then suddenly he could have showed his family the video of that but brilliant stuff. So I appreciate at least the approach yeah. for this other film. It, I mean, half of, that, half of that movie is what goes on in your mind. Right. Uh, right. As, as it because, happens. Because, because you're, you're thinking, thinking what are these people's thoughts like if they if they really know what's going on? Um, yeah, all right, I, gonna, I mean, the, going back to Dickweed, um, right, you know, right. They, there are reenactments. There are reenactments, and uh, and the the detective he he's like uh, one at one point during the the movie he talks about how you know <laughs> getting your dick cut off is is not as bad as you think it is, and it's all in your head. And that the majority of the pain is in your head. Uh, sorry, right. I didn't. Mean, yeah. Stuck that in there. All right, let's uh, move all right. on. Hey, let's get to the next one. What do you want to yeah, review? Whatever next it time? takes. We'll, we'll talk whatever about whatever it takes. It takes. Okay. Um, I can't wait for the next two because I know about these yeah, movies. Yeah, I'm, I'm saying the best for last. But whatever it Please. takes. Uh, excuse me. So a couple years before the pandemic, 2019, uh, there's this couple living in Boston, in the Boston area, in Massachusetts. And uh, the woman, this is a story that's been on the news. So you may know where I'm going with it. But a woman, uh, this elderly this middle-aged couple, they, they did an e-commerce uh, blog, uh, did it for a long time. Uh, this this woman uh, got a death threat, uh, you know, basically telling her, why are you trying to ruin eBay, basically? Uh, why are you trying to ruin the, the online auction business, blah, blah, blah. And, um, and 
the, so the, the 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 harassment. She gets cyber stalked, cyber harassed. It gets worse and worse. They dox her. Uh, they uh, they send her a uh, they they try to send her a pig fetus. Uh, they send her a pig mask. Um, at one point, uh, her husband. Oh, they start sending her pizzas in the middle of the night. Uh, her husband is followed by a mysterious black car. Uh, a week later, he's followed now by a mysterious silver car. Um, and so now they got the police in on this. And soon the uh, police get the FBI in on this. And they found out that the people who were stalking them was eBay. Was Wait, eBay. Is that, is that real? That is real. Uh, it was. Why was eBay stalking? Because because she was critical. She she was following oh my God, for I heard a very about long story. time. I, I heard about this story. Yeah. Like eBay, like going after people. This is in, in fact, uh, six people went to jail for it. Oh um, my god! Yeah, and uh, but but w- the the insane thing. Okay, so we talk a, a lot about this uh, from an entertainment standpoint, but eBay started off as a as an online auction company or online auction site, and the founder of eBay, his his whole idea is how do you do this? How do you how do you uh, bring people together and and how do you uh, uh, avoid fraud and stuff like that? And the founder of eBay basically said, um, we believe in the general uh, that people are generally trustworthy and will do the right thing. And they built this entire platform on that. I remember selling stuff on eBay a long time ago. And, um, you know, it was and for the most part, I never really had bad experiences with it. And this, there was this whole idea of, uh, you know, that people will do the right thing. And this is a great place to exchange you know, items, buy and sell items, blah, blah, blah. Um, but the problem was, is uh, eBay got so big, uh, it be, it went public. And the moment it went public and became corporate, that's when eBay changed. And what we soon find out is that not only did eBay change, uh, eBay's function changed uh, to the point where they created uh, a, an intelligence department, uh, one that rivaled the CIA. And uh, and so they were like, uh, for some reason, they were following the news closely about other countries and what was going on in the world. Uh, it was run by ex-CIA operatives. Um, and eBay basically had its own intelligence agency w- within it, uh, within this online auction. And so when this woman comes along um, and basically outs eBay in terms of, you know, where's the money going, their, their expenditures, uh, they, the CEO allegedly, uh, you know, down the line said, uh, we got to take her out. And uh, the intelligence department was the group that took her out, uh, basically. And um, in fact, uh, none of them would talk to them except one person. Uh, and she was the one driving. She was the one who rented the cars that were stalking the couple. And uh, and more insanely, the, the guy who was running the department was a uh, Svengali type. And uh, they don't go into any details other than the fact that uh, he was dating. Basically, his staff uh, was all uh, women who were under the age of 30, and he dated a lot of them. And so, uh, yeah, this is a one insane documentary you have to see. Chris, are you I'm still here. there? I'm here. Okay. I am there. My apologies, man. I'm just, I, you know, I'm trying to Yeah, eat. I know. You got to do it. You got to shove hey, your Hey, sorry. My apologies. Okay. <laughs> yeah, okay, I'm not, no, I heard face, everything though. you said. I yeah. I really want to see that because I heard about how eBay is just nuts. And I used to use eBay all the time. Mm-hmm. And then I got scammed a couple of times. And then there's like, there's a lot of, and also using eBay used to be so easy. Now it's like, you have to, there's so many intricate intricacies for it mm-hmm. for sellers. It's really for professionals only. Well, yeah. I mean, that's the thing is when the corporations took over eBay, it, it became a uh, brand focus. Right. So, so it became uh, a place for Nike to sell its wear and, and all. Yeah, it's annoying. Or yeah. auctions. They do auctions for charity, which is fine. But it's like now it's become mm-hmm. more professional. I miss the Wild West of eBay yeah. when I could just sell weird stuff. And yeah. look, I took it very much as a responsibility. There was I was out of work like in the late 90s for a little bit, a couple mm-hmm. months. And I made like a full time living selling stuff on eBay. Now it was like full time work to make a full time living. Yeah. But it was weird. There was like this couple month stretch where I was just like, you know, looking for work and um, eBay saved me. 
So yeah. I have to give them credit. And it was well, a good way to get yeah. rid of stuff, too. Well, living near Disneyland, I, I kind of got into the buying collectibles and then selling it on eBay and uh, did pretty good for a little while. Did popcorn buckets uh, tie into that at all? Like Some of them. I, I mean, like the Han Solo in Carbonite popcorn bucket sold very well. Oh, my God. Oh, my. I have that. Yeah, I have one, too. I have it. But I kept it because I thought it was cool. No, I have some of mine. What are the yeah. dudes? And some of this stuff is, is from, from my uh, collecting days. What are the Dune popcorn buckets going for? <laughs> yeah, look at that. Yeah. So, hey, I'll, we can move on to, uh, let's go to Sasquatch. Wait, wait, no. We got to, oh, we got to, we oh, got to, yeah, $100. There's one for 40 bucks, which is about what it costs. No, it's 25 bucks. 100 bucks. Almost 100. And se- oh, my God. They're going for 80, 100 bucks. Wow. Yeah. Well, I want to get yeah, mine I was back supposed there. to give you one. I might not be able to now. No, I'm kidding. Okay. Uh, next movie, Alan. And Let's this one. Sasquatch Summer. Yeah. Oh my God. Okay. I can't wait to hear this one. This is coming to theaters in in like a month or so. Yeah, in, in April. And uh from the yeah. Zellner brothers, which I understand you have a, a I you know them. I love the Zellner brothers. The Zellner brothers uh live in Texas. They've been making movies for years. They've had movies at Sundance. Just a couple of the titles. Plastic Utopia is a movie that they made years ago. Um, they did, uh, so uh, Kumiko, The Treasure Hunter. They also did, I want to find this one movie. Uh, they did like a bunch of short films. They've done so many of these movies. And one of the movies they did that I thought was really interesting was, it's called Foxy and the Weight of the World. Look this movie up. Foxy and the weight of the world. Um, David Zellner is, I, I, I got to share it. I got to share a screen here. It's about a guy who is, this guy's a complete a-hole. Okay. He's a complete a-hole. Just like he's, he beats people up. He does, he's mean to people. He's a jerk at the bar. He's cruel to women. He's just a jerk. And someone poisons him. And he's got very short time to live. And he's talking to his cute dog as he dies. It's a nine minute short from 2005, Foxy and the Weight of the World. I'm sure you can find the short film because the Zellner brothers have put like their short films. These guys are wildly creative. They have an amazing resume and I will watch anything Mm -hmm. that they put out. So I'm super excited for because I saw the trailer for this. And I was like, what is this movie? It looks so weird. And I'm like, oh, Zellner Brothers. Yeah. They have the most it's, bizarre it's, it's sense even, of humor. Yeah. This movie is more insane yeah. than the trailer. Let's put it that tell way. Tell me about it. Tell so, me about it. Okay. So I can't tell you much because I think a lot, the, the beauty of this movie is to experience it for the first time yourself without without much. Right. But I will say it's it's a beautiful movie. It's shot uh, in Northern California. It's It's about Sasquatches. And so they went to the area where Sasquatches, uh, you know, are, uh, which is uh, northern Northern California around the Humboldt area. Uh, just beautiful. Uh, it's a uh, stars. It's so it's shot like uh, one of those old Disney nature documentaries, uh, where they just bring in cameras and they kind of put the the animals in kind of situations that they wouldn't normally be in, but as a way to kind of tell the story. Well, that's what happens here. Uh, with the, this Sasquatch family. There's four of them, um, kind of the patriarch played by uh, the other Zellner. Uh, mm-hmm. what, uh, not not David, but uh, I got it here. But uh, Nathan Zellner. Yeah, Nathan uh, and David. Also stars Jesse Eisenberg and uh, Riley Keough as kind of the uh, mom and dad uh, Sasquatch. And then Christoph Zedjik Denent uh, plays the, baby, the, the child Sasquatch. And uh, and it's basically this whole movie is just about uh, what what life is like uh, as the Sasquatch. And from what the Zellners say, that they consulted experts, and that this movie is a hundred percent accurate uh, in in terms of how Sasquatch lives. Um, the you talk about crazy. I'll just get into the thing you saw in the trailer, which happens right at the beginning of the movie. Um, uh, Jesse Eisenberg and Riley Keough's characters they're they're having sex, and uh, she gets pregnant. And so this movie is about their survival, uh, living in the woods. Uh, part of it is kind of how do they how do they survive? Where do they get their foods? Um, <laughs> where uh, a lot of sex. Uh, there, there, <laughs> um, there's uh, you know this is not for kids because there are peepees and boobs, and um, 
And uh, let's see, how much more should I reveal? And and there's elements where they're running into remnants of uh, of of man, so kind of that thing. But uh, it is an insane movie. Um, from what I understand, at Sundance, people were walking out of this movie. At South by Southwest, everyone was howling at this movie. Because um, the is... Sundance audiences, they're way too, they can be a little elitist and a little, mm -hmm. uh, uh, you know what? They can be picky. They can be yeah. picky. At Sundance, I feel like there's certain movies that will not play Sundance that will 100% play south by southwest yeah. and the zellner brothers just have a reputation mm -hmm. i love them because their sense of humor is weird and i love it you know what it is is uh in terms of comedies there is that line of decency and i like movies that cross that line even Same. uh yeah and Same. i don't necessarily have to have a reason or a story reason for them to cross it they just cross it and this one does i mean essentially what it is is it's four people dressed up as sasquatches doing what animals do and and literally everything that animals do um uh, yeah i mean in my you mind mean, I'm you like, mean does a sasquatch poop in the woods i don't know uh, <laughs> i mean that's the thing is you know all these scenes are coming up in my head and it's like i don't want to spoil it and i'm not going to spoil it so um, it, I'll just say it's insane uh, and it's crazy. I think my only complaint about this movie is because because it's basically following them and that each scene is basically a random scene of you know something that hit. It's kind of like a series of skits. Um, the the there's there's no sense of direction in in the movie other than the fact that you're following the Riley Keough character um, through her gestation and and ultimate birth, uh, which is even more insane. Um, you know, you just really don't know where we're headed with this because everything that happens to him is very random. And so it's hard to get a sense of, am I halfway through the movie? Is the movie almost over? Um, and uh, that, that, that would be my only complaint about the movie. But other than that, yeah, uh, this is a hell of a fun movie to watch. I and, uh, can't wait. Yeah. I can't wait. There's a stand. They're promoting this big. I've seen the trailer recently mm -hmm. at AMC and there is a standee at the AMC Burbank 16. It's just so weird. It's like, it's got that a 24 feel. I don't know if it's a, is it a 24? It is. Uh, it it is might Bleaker be. Street. It's Bleecker street. Yeah. Bleecker street. But they like, there's see these small a 24 Bleecker street neon, these mm -hmm. kind of smaller indies that, really curate the films well which i love that one's on my radar for sure all right now it's time alan you know, actually i forgot the uh, the oh. uh nicholas cage one uh i forgot to put it on there but nick which cage one? was there uh it's called arcadian i didn't put it on the list well but, uh, you, we need a we need a did you want to review yeah. that movie yeah let me let me go through that one real quick i mean it's nick cage he was literally at the academy awards the night before uh, okay arcadian review. there we go um but this is, uh, this is, let's just say it's like a quiet place. Nick Cage plays a father who, uh, who has two sons and, um, and he's protecting them from this, this weird alien, whatever, uh, that, that stalks, that stalks everybody at night. Uh, so you, you do what you do during the day, but at night you have to, uh, nail, lock down your house, uh, you know, lock every door, barricade every door, uh, because if you don't, they'll come in and they'll, they'll kill you. And um, in the story here, uh, he has two sons. They're both teenagers. One falls in love with a girl who lives at a, a farm across the way. He doesn't come home one night. And uh, fearing the worst, uh, Nick Cage has to go out and uh, track down his son, leaving the other one uh, at home to fend for himself. And um, and uh, let's just say that, that that what I told you right there, you would think that's an entire movie. That's only... The first act of the movie uh it, it expands from there um one thing i will say is a uh nick cage comes across uh in this he plays a father who loves his son and teaches them survival skills but it's a very subdued performance there's really only one nick cage moment in this movie and it's it's great it builds up to it um and and when was the last time you saw the, a movie about a father and his sons uh in fact it, it at dinner, the very first uh, dinner in the, the movie, uh, you know, they're talking about the situation they're in. And he basically says, all right, uh, the son's getting in a fight. He breaks it up and he says, we're men here. And, and he holds up a knife. He says, I am a man. And then jams it into the table. And then he makes his sons do the same thing. I am a man. I am a man. 
I mean, that's that's patriarchy there. Uh, and it's like, how did this get past the sensitivity readers? Um, makes you wonder. But uh, so do you recommend it? I absolutely recommend it. It's 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 very much in the vein of a quiet place. So uh, it looks good. I looked it up. I probably should, but um, I, I looked it up and it looked at Nick Cage. I think that's mm -hmm. awesome. Yeah, I, I think it's a great role because he's it's a very grounded role compared to what you know him uh, to do. Uh, and uh, grounded Nick Cage is just as good as wild Nick Cage. Nice. Okay, uh, let's sorry, do it. Uh, sorry, someone is texting me some interesting news. Okay. Um, and I want to say there are 507 viewers on Rumble. So thank you for that. Let's do a couple super chats before we get to Monkey Man and my yeah. early review of Three Body Problem real quick. Um, Jimmy Francis says, I think Nick Cage would come on Film Thread at some point. He seems like that kind of guy you should ask him. I have met him. I met him in London for a film junket for a movie that I completely forget the title of. However, um, he knew Film Threat. And I think it's we probably knew Film Threat from the 90s because it was a counterculture movie magazine. So I'm not surprised here. Bruce, yeah, oh, I should say he. we were trying to get him for uh, the Willy Wonderland uh, watch party. We were trying to get him for Willy's Wonderland. Um, didn't happen, but we'll continue to try. There was Bruce Leroy... Bruce Leroy Jenkins for 10 says, if National Treasure 3 was to happen today, Nick Cage would be the third lead behind two diverse characters and made inferior and the plot, a three hour struggle session. <laughs> what was the treasure that was stolen? Land. <laughs> oh my was, God, you're so right. I, I think um, that is the script. <laughs> yeah. I apologize. I'm late. I smashed the like though, says Red French Moon for two euros. Thank you for that. And a Rumble rant. Shout out to everyone on Rumble. There's over 500 people watching us on Rumble. Thank you for that. Uh, from Caveat Ties, who's a sub supporter for two. Remember being so excited for National Treasure 2 because part of it took place in my home state of South Dakota. Didn't you know you were in South Dakota? But thank you for that. Now we're like 650 people on, um, on Rumble. So um, hang on. All right. Oh, no. I don't know if I should show this. I don't know if I should show this. <laughs> A minute and 32 seconds. Should I show this? Uh, I don't know if I should show this. Complaining Alan. about playing videos that we haven't vetted first. Yes, that's true. You know who complains is about there, that? Is there a potential can you, that can you take like that? Her. I can't take that off the Arcadian thing. Can you delete it, please? Yeah, let me. Uh, da, da, da. Because you're in the wrong banner thing. Oh, you're so, right. Yeah. You could okay, okay. I can't, yeah. I'm in the I don't right know band. where you are. I'm in the yeah, right. I like, band. To get, I like to get prepped for the show, and today I had no prep. Okay, so you're writing something, or do you want me to hit the right? Don't worry, no, I got okay. it. Okay. Uh, this was sent to me. It's 90 seconds. It um, the person who sent this to me said, "I hope you're not offended." Oh. I don't know what that means. Okay. But let's check it out. It's another day at the comic shop. This is a cartoon from Dominic Pulcino. Hmm. I'll put the link in the description of this so you can check it out. Give him a give him a sub. He is at Animation Vault now over 4,000 subscribers. So give him a sub. Um and there you go. Alan, if you would mute me when I start yep, this. I Okay, and then we'll sort of coordinate and then we'll react to it on the back end. Here we go. Another day at the comic shop. He did. It's free. Okay, you got to share your screen. Love here. Cool, love in the well, uh, yeah, stop. Sorry. You got to share your screen. No one can see anything. Oh, sorry about that. I forgot that part. Yeah. Let's look at me. Oh, my God. Boomer. Oh, my God. All right, <laughs> let's go. You ready? Here we go. Another day at, in the comic shop. He did, he did the, the movie, movie that, that he did that's on Amazon. It's free. Part of Prime is Love Sick Fool, Love in the Age of Like. It's kind of done in the same uh, sort love, of Love in the style. Age of Like. <laughs> love in the Age of My girlfriend just broke up with me because I neglected to click like on her Facebook photo. Mm -hmm. I think I'm in love. Oh, yeah? What's she like? I don't know. I haven't met her yet. Oh, my God. She could be a horrible person. <laughs> mm -hmm. ah. That could be a sign, too. 
What's it mean? That they don't like you. Be careful what you wish for. My wife's a bitch. <laughs> Don't get discouraged. You just have to get out there and talk to them. Yeah. Hey, how's it going? Hi. The universe has a plan for you. But how do you know that? And if it does, what if, I don't know, what if it's a bad plan? It's a former animator at uh, Family Guy, Rick and Morty. Um, the uh, Simpsons. The Simpsons. Like, I'm going to buy it. I'm going to buy that it. after the yeah, show. Cheap, I'm going to straight up buy. buy it. So there you go. Well, un unmute me here. Um, yeah. That's like just a bullshit promo for his <laughs> movie Lovesick Fool. Oh. What the hell was that? We're, there's got to be more of Gary and I interacting. Uh, look. It's a great plug. Look, on I'm being honest, great plug for the movie. I thought we were going to get another day at the comic shop. In the comic shop. I got it wrong on the thing. Well, Dominic, good try. You're welcome. Dominic, good try. You're welcome. It's total. He texts me just now. It's self-promotion. It's just a promo of my film. <laughs> All right, fine. I want to do a proper episode three of this. <laughs> that, come on. All right, what can we say? All right, Alan, now it's time for you. But well, seriously, go buy it. Okay. It's a, you know, go, I, look, I put it, well, it's part of Prime, so it's just part of my, I, I'm just going to watch it. It's in my queue to watch it. I'll watch it. But Alan, right, let's do this. Time for Monkey Man. Tell Monkey us how, Man. tell us about this movie. The trailer wowed everybody. It played at South by Southwest. Tell us your early reaction, okay. early review for Monkey Man. Okay. First of all, let me, let me tell you uh, about, about the screening uh because everyone was there dev patel the cast uh jordan peele he was there um the the room was packed the the paramount theater is packed about 1200 people um the majority of the women uh, the people there were women and they oh, were really? screaming and they were screaming because they love dev patel and the moment he's his shirt comes off uh it, the room was just reverberating which which goes to your point chris that women want to see movies about men. Women, women want to see strong men and being doing manly things filled with testosterone coming out everywhere. Yes. And and I think the uh the reaction to this movie reflects that. I mean, the again, it was like being at an insane concert in a way. And this and we're talking about Dev Patel. Uh he right. comes out and he's just he's just this kind of awkward filmmaker, you know, this tall, lanky guy who loves martial arts films and wanted to make a, a martial arts film of himself uh, for himself. And, and that's what this movie is. It's, it's monkey man. Um, basically it's inspired by the, what's, legend. what's the story? What's the yes. story? I'm going to tell you it's inspired by the legend of uh, Hanuman, who is uh, a monkey who, um, who uh, wanted to reach the fruit that was at the tallest, uh, the, at the highest point of the tree. He finally gets there reaches for it and eats it and realizes he ate the sun because it was so high. Uh, you know, this story is about an underdog. Uh, his name is Kid in the movie, uh, played by Dev Patel. Uh, he uh, lives in the low lowest caste in India. Um, he his By day, he... Uh, oh, during the day, he, uh, he is trained to be a fighter. And at night, he uh, goes to an arena run by Charlton Copley's character, and uh, and gets involved in cage fights, and he loses. In fact, it's all fixed. Uh, by the third round, he he's down. Uh, that's kind of what he's paid for. Um, but he's not getting paid enough for all the abuse he's taking. So he gets involved with uh, this uh, kind of this mob woman. Uh, I wish I had her name, but I don't. Um, and uh, he decides that he's going to infiltrate her system and, and become a, a lackey, so so to speak. And um, he ingratiates her, him to herself, um, and uh, he gets this low-level job, just doing kind of jobs for, for this woman, um, and then realizes that uh, a long time ago when his mother was killed, uh, it was uh, killed by the police chief uh, of that town, realized that he works for her, 
and decides that this is the time in which he needs to uh, to take revenge for the death of his death of his mother. Uh, and in this elaborate attempt to kill him, uh, it fails. Uh, he's he he does a he gets close, but he survives. Uh, the the ch police chief survives, and now it's about revenge, about running away. And he runs off to kind of a monastery where he learns to become the monkey man. Uh, goes through all this training uh, to finally exact his revenge. And that's kind of what this movie's about. Um, it's a long movie, as you'd expect. A lot of action. I I'll say this. Uh, the action you've seen so far, it all happens in the third act. And the third act of this movie, where it kind of is the culmination of, of uh, you know his training and then getting to the bad guy, uh, it's amazing. This this third act feels like a uh, you know Hong Kong uh, martial arts movie. Uh, it's full of action. My my problem with the movie is leading up to it, the first two acts. Uh, the first act has a lot of action in it, uh, and he gets beaten up a lot. Uh, but the middle is basically his training, his finding his center. You know, it 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 goes on quite a long time, and there's not a lot of action, and uh, it's really a lot of soul searching. So it, it you know so there's this action uh, a, a dip and then a, a valley and then rises up to a great ending um my biggest problem with the movie is i couldn't understand half the movie uh what the, are you talking about the, the, like in terms it, of the language the language the it's it's oh. uh it's it's in english uh the majority of the movie is in english and the accents are very heavy and mm. it was very difficult for me to figure out what was going on for example the the bad guy the police chief they called him chief uh, in the beginning of the movie, I go, well, that's a weird, uh, what, is, what does it mean to be chief? And then you realize halfway through the movie, oh, he's the police chief. And that's why they call him chief. Mm -hmm. You know, that's kind of the thing you, you struggle with here. Um, you know, I will say that, uh, you know, I, you know, if it weren't for, I'd be so much more into this movie. It wasn't for the, just kind of the long uh, second act that where you're, you're trying to understand what they're saying. Um, you know, you know. So you know, if you go strictly for the action, I think you'll do okay. But again, uh, it's a it's a bit it, unevenly paced. It um, sounds a little like you're disappointed, Alan. I am disappointed. Uh, it it was it was good. It was fun, but I expected more. And I th I think that's the, my advice is set your expectations low. Well, so and, that, so would you say that the trailer kind of um, is misleading? It's it's not. I mean, that's just look. It's shot like a comic book, so I think the, you know, the the all the images, uh, he has he has a good grasp of imagery. He has a good guess grasp of the action, Dev Patel, um, but it, you know, it it kind of drags in, in the middle. And really, for me, the fun didn't happen until the third act. I didn't start liking this movie until the third act. Um, you know, but but let's let's get back to all the DEI stuff. Uh, it's stars a man. Uh, most of the crew is a man. He's saving a girl. You know, if there's an upside, there there's your upside. You know, it's the not, upside is it ignores all that stuff. It ignores it. It's not it's not woke at all. Um, and uh, you know, I think um, you know, and and you know, it, it's a great movie to take your girlfriend to see. All right, yeah. let's go to your comments and questions before we pivot. I mean, you're expecting more. I, I feel like you're. I mean, I think most people are expecting great things about it. I, no, I no, I, I'm expecting movie. more from basically what I saw in the trailer. I want to see that movie. And if you're telling me it's slow until act three, I don't know. I, I mean, I'm, and I'm also, I'm not against a slow burn in a film, not against a slow burn, but um, there's got to be something to keep me going. Mm -hmm. And that trailer looked like knock out of the park. And what you're saying is, Lower your expectations, and you'll probably still enjoy it. But yeah. um, that's disheartening. Yeah. I really but, love but, that. Yeah. Tell, tell. I mean, so, I hate to say it, the fact that you have to wait to the third act to really see some great action. Um, you know, it's just a it's a very slow burn. Right. Let's yeah. go to your comments and questions here. Mexican Iron Man for two says, "Smash that like button, people! Thank you for the more than thousand people watching us live." And Davina Duckworth asks, "No subtitles." There are subtitles uh, for the non-English parts, and and you, I wish the English had subtitles. Joseph says it's at eighty-nine percent on Rotten Tomatoes, yeah. so critics seem to like it. Well, look, critics saw 
critics were there with me. Uh, right. There were a lot of critics there. Uh, we were all in the tent. And I will say, you know, it's one of those things where you're at a festival, the, the atmosphere is high, uh, and I think people are kind of riding that that adrenaline wave. And, and I have right. to say, I, I wasn't on board with that adrenaline wave, as right. everyone else was. David Kelly for 499 pounds says, what was the bigger Oscar crime saving private Ryan losing to Shakespeare in love or Sean Astin not being nominated for return of the King, uh, saving private Ryan, uh, the entire Lord of the Rings series should have had more Oscars. I, I'm, I don't really have time to, we're going to go yeah, through. We have a lot of stuff, two more quick things. No more chats unless they're supers. Dandy John, Jan, Jandon, said trailer made it look like it was going to be fun, be a nonstop fun action. Oh, it it's not. not. <laughs> it, stops, it stops. So that's disheartening. Uh, Boy Kills World might be the action movie you wanted Monkey Man to be. Yeah, that uh, one, that Matt one is a roller coaster ride. Matt Bookish says Matt Bookish Bastard. Yeah, I saw the trailer for Boy Kills World. It looks really fun. It looks like a video game. It is. It, it is uh, literally a roller coaster ride, and it takes a lot of turns that you don't expect. I, I love that movie so much. What, Boy Kills World? Mm -hmm. yeah. When did you see it? When I see it, well, remember, it was last year. We were supposed to interview uh, Sam Raimi about it. But you saw it. I saw it. I interviewed the director. So on the interview channel is, is my interview with the director. But it was it, uh, it was yet? produced by Sam Raimi. Hmm? When did it come out? Or no, it came out it a while. Was, oh, it was it was a Sundance film. Sorry. Okay, cool. I'm sorry. It's it's it it I just it remember a festival movie. Okay. All yeah. Right. All right. I just remember it happened. I saw it. It was a festival movie. Oh, Toronto. It was there for Toronto. Uh Sam Raimi had to pull out because of the SAG strike. So I couldn't talk to him. That's why. But I do think it's coming out now. Is that right? Yes. So it played Toronto. I believe then they postponed it till after the strike, and now it's coming out. Right. Okay. All right. Uh, I do believe we have a special guest coming to join us in 10 minutes. Um, or maybe there will. I don't know. We'll find out. But here we go. Monkey meh, says Patrick Lemire. Alan Ng, probably. All right. That was a good comment. But all right. All right, it's time to review an early review, and this is going to be non-spoiler because I want you to experience Three Body Problem the way I did. I know nothing. It is a series of novels uh, by a Chinese author. It is about a global, a global cataclysm that occurs that unites scientists all towards a common goal. I'll speak as much about it as I, as I can without giving spoilers. I'll just say this. Um, the first few episodes are a little slow. You're introduced to a group of characters that peripherally know each other from the world of science. You meet Jess Hong. You, you, well, excuse me. You meet Jin Cheng played by Jess Hong. You meet Jack Rooney played by John Bradley. Uh, you meet, uh, Augie Salazar, played by Elsa Gonzalez, and something mysterious is happening. You also meet a character named Will Downing, played by Alex Sharp, who was in the movie How to Talk to Girls at Parties, which is a film I uh, really love. And uh, John Bradley, uh, uh, oddly, was in Game of Thrones. He plays a scientist named Jack Rooney. They're all scientists, and something is happening with scientists around the world. They're being murdered, or they're committing suicide. And each of them has been oddly infected with a series of numbers that flash before their eyes. This is all in the trailer. And the numbers is a countdown, presumably to their death. Why is this happening? Why is it only affecting scientists working in innovative fields, mostly in areas that involve a breakthrough research into things that will advance humanity? Um, and through this series of characters, because it's a very global film, they all come together to solve this problem. The opening, the very first minutes of the first episode, takes place in the 1960s during the Cultural Revolution in China, where a young woman witnesses her father being beaten mercilessly by revolutionaries who are getting rid of everything, which includes science. This bitterness 
towards the death of her father will inform why this character makes certain choices. And what you discover is that the Chinese that, that like all over the world, the Russians, the Americans and the Chinese have built giant communication devices to talk to any civilization out there who will listen. And interestingly, someone talks back. This sets off all the all of these events that take place in the 60s because it does do a little cutting back and forth between present day and the 60s story, which is very important. Someone from out there in the universe responds. Then, so we're bouncing back between present day and the story in the 60s in China about an alien civilization that reaches out. What do they want? Um, I, I am not going to reveal what they want or what the meaning of the term three body problem is. It is all revealed in episode three. I'm going to say that the first two episodes are a little slow. It's a lot of setting the table with characters and some characters are likable. Some are a little cringe. I'll say this. Um, the, the, by, by, but by episode three, when you get to episode three, I was hooked and I finished watching the whole thing. I've seen all eight episodes. And I plan to rewatch it before we do a full review, which will include you, Alan, because I yeah. really want you to see this. I really want to see it. It is. I really loved the show Lost. I thought Lost mm -hmm. was great. The problem with Lost um, is this is the final season. <laughs> the the well, not just the final season. The fact that it meandered, yeah. and there was so much mystery box right there was look at this mystery box and look at that mystery box and look at this mystery box and and nothing would be resolved nothing in the show would ever reach a place of like explaining what the what did the numbers mean what did this mean what was the no, it, none of it mattered it felt like at the end of the day nothing mattered the great thing about this show is there are a lot of mysteries and mystery boxes opened and they all pay off and you get answers to all the questions. It's literally the show is the show that lost wanted to be and couldn't be because of the writing. It was and based it, on a book though, right? It's based on a series of novels. Yeah. Season one is more than likely. And, and I, now I want to read the books. Season one has to be, I'm going to guess the first book because it, it doesn't necessarily, I'm not going to say it ends on a cliffhanger, but there's more to the story. Nothing. It's not all resolved in season one. Let's just say that it's setting the table. But when you get to episode three and you understand what is happening, incredible. Hmm. So it, it, it's it's just like this is what's happening, and then there are more mysteries, more mysteries, more things that reveal themselves. There are challenges where you get to the final episode, like how is humanity going to survive the consequences? of an alien civilization who knows of earth's existence. How will the world respond? And you will see this show. The first two episodes, I got to say are kind of a slow burn. And there are unfortunately some cringe moments while it's a global cast and a very diverse cast in a good way. There is this sort of annoying girl boss moment in the first episode involving the character of Augie Salazar. I think she's the weakest character in the whole show. She is a girl boss, scientist, smarter than everybody, incredibly arrogant, as beautiful as a supermodel, lesbian, not a fan of, uh, there's like a scene where overtly she kind of brushes off this white dude who's at play karaoke, just trying to make conversation and he's made to look a fool. I get it, but it's like, I'm just, I'm rolling my eyes at that. But I'll say that the movie, or the, excuse me, the show is not overtly woke. There's just sort of has its sort of cringe moments here and there, which is like, ugh, you kind of expect, but more than 80 to 90% of it isn't that, right? But so if you can just like set that aside, I will say this, the opening scene from the very first episode about the cultural revolution in China is unbelievable all these young people beating this scientist senseless mm -hmm. and the witnessing of that and the language that's used it kind of reminds me a little bit 
of the culture war happening now and a lot of what is happening. We are not very many steps on college campuses from real life horrors like what happened in China during the Cultural Revolution. I believe that that opening scene, though it was written, the novel was written 15 years ago. So, and it's all, all of those events, the culture war was not a, a, in full effect back then. It was maybe seeds of it, but it's more meaningful now. And I believe that opening scene of the show is a comment on today. It's 100% a comment on today. Um, uh, so, you know, um, I really love the first season. I'm dying to see what happens in uh, up. I mean, like I just need to see where the story goes. Um, I have to say they did a very good job. Benioff and Weiss, when they have a roadmap, like a novel, I actually think they're pretty good producers and it's very much deals in the realm of serious science fiction. This is serious science fiction uh, with likable characters and shocking turns of events. I'm being very vague mm -hmm. for a reason because I do not want to ruin things. One thing you can see in clips and in the trailer, these this other civilization finds a way to gift these helmets that bring one into a video game world that is so real because how these this other civilization is trying to explain to humans their the problem that they have and um they 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 present it in the form of a video game so that humans can understand their dilemma it's so well done it's and um those video game scenes are really important so pay attention to what's happening it's about it's 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 the way that they're explaining their civilization's dilemma i can't wait for the next season um i'm not going to say a lot of my problems with the show are nitpicks if i get into the nitpicks we're going to get into spoilers yeah. alan please watch the show yeah i'll have to do it this weekend uh, we will do, have access yeah we will do a full review once alan has seen it and we will talk spoilers, but I would like to wait until um, I think the show comes out in like two weeks. Yeah, the first episode premiered at South by Southwest. I, I ran into uh, three people who were real big fans of the book, so they were interested in seeing it. Um, well, I, I've only spoken to one other person who's seen it. We could not stop talking about it. Uh, we could not stop talking about it. It was because, I, first of all, look. Just because something has spaceships and laser guns doesn't make it science fiction. This is science fiction that talks about things that we actually may have to deal with in the future, whether it be the challenges of science, the um, also the consequences of certain decisions that people make when it comes to science. Um, even Oppenheimer is referenced by one of the scientists. And what's, uh, I don't feel that this show is talking down to people. It's not dumb, right? I mean, sometimes science fiction, can, and look, I love a good dumb sci-fi. I love a good, like, you know, I, 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 I'm cool with like, just make it a simple monster movie. I'm okay with all of that but I want a good smart sci-fi. I really want to read the novels now because I want to see what happens. Um, you know, with the story, it sets out this incredible, I mean, there's so many incredible and interesting ideas that are presented and real science in it. Like most everyone in the show is like a physicist in this and about the evolution of science, how scientists have also been used by governments to um, move, to uh, move forward certain agendas. I just really, really loved it. I can't wait to watch it through again. And um, the only thing I can compare it to, it's like Lost because of the mystery, constant mystery boxes that are revealed and paid off instead of not. And the global cast and the sort of world. There's even a, one of the actors from Lost is actually in the show. in a the big Asian one. <laughs> Um, no, it's actually, well, maybe there's another one. Um, Liam Cunningham is the actor. He plays a character named Thomas Wade, who's, um, 
it, it, they don't even really say who he is. He just knows everything. He's like an industrialist with, you know, he's got endless amounts of money to be able to try to fix things. And now you've, seen, you've seen the whole thing. I've seen the whole thing. Okay. Yeah. Let's just say this. Uh, not everybody makes it. <laughs> well, not everybody makes it. So be careful what characters you start to love. Yeah. Not everybody makes it. And it's so, so don't, don't love the white guys. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Why'd you have to put it that way? But Lee, <laughs> Lee, Lee Cunningham, he was in, um, he was in lost. He was also in, um, he was in game of Thrones. Just the cast is great. Mm -hmm. I mean, whatever you say about Benioff and Weiss, man, they're good at casting. They're good at casting. So yeah. Um, Liam Cunningham, was I'm hearing why am I spacing on it's because I haven't seen Game of Thrones in so long. Um, but yeah, I always really liked him, so yeah, you gotta go back a while for his career. So wait, he was in Lost, right? Am I wrong? Why did I? I've not the, the name sounds the, does not ring a bell. You're you, you'll recognize him, yeah, you'll recognize him. So, yeah, but he was in Game of Thrones. Well, he's a white so. guy, so he'll die. Um, Stop maybe. it. I'm not going <laughs> to say anything. I'm not going to say anything to you. I'm not talking to you. I so just want to be able to. Penny's talk. father? Or... Sorry, what? He might have been Penny's father. That's what he wanted. That's it. Be. Penny's father. Okay. Yeah. Um, but he was also in Game of Thrones. In any case, um, can't wait to talk to you about it more. This is my early review. I'm very enthusiastic. Cannot wait to see where it goes. Right. I haven't felt this way about a show this year at all where I just need to see like it was, you know, it's like how certain Netflix shows are like potato chips. You're like, but I have to see what happens next. The first couple episodes had me a little concerned. And then when, when I got to episode three, wow. Yeah. So, That's kind of how uh, I felt about one piece. I, I couldn't get past the second episode and, but everyone's telling me right. you need to get past the second episode. <laughs> yeah. Um, in any case, uh, looking forward to talking to you about it, Alan. And okay. I recommend it. At least, good. you know what? Get through episode three. If you can't, you got to get through episode three okay. before you can really make a judgment. Let's go to your comments and questions here, starting with the super chat from Ginger Adventure for five. Frank, I dare you to wear the Caucasian shirt at a screening. And of course, ask Nicole Kidman. Why would I not wear ask it? Ask her what? Ask Why her would what? I? Oh. <laughs> Are, I know the question you're saying. Are your nipples? <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. I have three of those shirts. One for me, one for Dante, one for Alan. We'll be wearing them in Vegas. I mean, I'll wear it. I mean, I'll wear it. Oh, my God. I should wear it tomorrow. No, no. It's for Vegas. Save no, 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 no. When I go to see the uh, American Society of oh, Magical yeah. Negroes. Yes. Can I wear the too. Yeah. In fact, draw attention to the fact that you're wearing it constantly. Oh, my God. I'm going to wear it. I'm wearing <laughs> it tomorrow with Dante. Right, you can do that. But I bought you one just because, you know, whatever. Yeah. So. Because I'm um, adjacent. Yes, I get it. Um, And you'll be happy to know lots of Asians are in, uh, yes. are in <laughs> three body problem. The, the word China kind of tipped it off. <laughs> so. so there you are. Um, let me just start. We got a lot of good comments about, about this. So I want to read them. Doc Savage, the trailer I saw gave me the impression that it's pretentious and borders on political ideology. I hope I'm wrong. Um, politics is a part of it in a way that like the scientists are kind of in the midst of global politics. Right. Um, but Who would that ever happen in real life, really? No, but it's like no, but that's what I'm saying. It's it's done in a very smart way. Yeah. And I like it reminds me the thing about Lost. Let me say something about Lost. Lost was a huge hit. Lost was a huge hit, and no, and this is before anyone ever used the word diversity, because Lost was organically diverse. Why? They were all a bunch of people on a flight and they didn't know each other and they weren't friends before that flight, that flight crashed. Suddenly a bunch of people from all over the world 
with all different professions, different levels, different places in their lives, all come together. It was organically diverse. And I don't remember when Lost was on anyone ever talking or using the words diverse. The one thing I do know, I went to some panel at the WGA and they were talking about um, demographics, saying that the reason a lot of TV shows either succeeded or failed is because they were underrepresenting people in the uh, Nielsen ratings. So what they did was they started to actually give boxes to a more diverse group of Americans, knowing that like X percent of Americans are this type and whatever. And when they did that, it's like, oh, we should probably just make more shows that have like uh, include more people. I'm not saying that that's, but they didn't do that previous to like, you know, I don't know, like 2005 ish. Right. Like that's when they started like being just doing a better sampling of people that watch television. So things changed, uh, but it yeah. was organic. It was well, like, it, yeah, it was, it was, it was the it, let, let me finish. Organically. It, it was or responding to the marketplace. Like Asians buy laundry detergent too. Yeah, Calgon. As Calgon, whatever. People buy products. Everyone buys products. Fine. But, Lost was a huge hit with advertisers because of that. And I went to a whole panel at the WGA talking about this stuff, but it was done not in a way of like any sort of DEI or wokeness. It was just like, Hey, you can make money. <laughs> That's the, the whole thing was like, Hey, just make money. And so um, doc Savage, check it out. I really want to hear what the chat thinks yeah. about it. Well, Andy, I was just gonna say, it's the difference between doing it organically versus forcing it. Uh, and then, yeah. and now you have rules on how you portray diverse people, uh, people of color, which, which well, is, yeah, you know, which we've been covering. So, yeah. Right. Or forcing it in everything mm -hmm. when it doesn't need to be there. Yeah. You know, like you, can do a show like, about white you can do a show like Shogun and mm -hmm. uh, someone wrote a dumb article. Um, the lack of black yeah. characters in Shogun. It's like, well, they weren't there. I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> I know. Um, was revenge because there weren't a lot of Asians and roots. So uh Andy underscore LDN says, Chris, read the books and see if you give the same review. They've removed the removed the lead character, split them into five. Sounds like they've hit it for normies. No offense. Well, I am a normie, it's fine, but um, yeah, I'm so really your friend excited. Who saw it didn't read the book, or did what's that? Book. Did the friend you talked to read the book? Uh yes, she read the book and she really liked it. Okay. So yeah, so she had read the book. I talked to her last night. Um, but yeah, no, I, look, I just like that there's serious sci-fi. Sci mm -hmm. You know, it, this is serious, like where all sci-fi should have been going. Uh, SLVR says, this is why I watch this channel. Whether you both like it, hate it, your passion is undeniable. Cool review, definite watch. At very least, watch through episode three. Then decide if you want to continue. Because getting to episode three, I was pissed because I'm like, Oh, I'm rolling my eyes, mystery box, cringe moments, getting to know. It's like, there's a little bit of setting the table. Like what does this cultural revolution in China have to do with present day? What's okay. happening with these scientists? I thought it was kind of like this whole thing that's flashing before their eyes, the countdown. What does that mean? Guess what? Everything is explained and the explanations aren't stupid. Yeah. So well, I like the fact that, that I like Thank the you. fact that Netflix put a note on there saying, don't review it until you see all eight. They're right. Um, uh, Joseph, who's a member, thank you for that. There's eight hours of it, Alan. Yeah. You've got a lot of homework. Well, I yeah. think some of the episodes are 45 minutes, but I, I, I wonder if your daughter would like it. Hmm. Does she no. like like serious stuff that's more on the serious side? Uh, she can. She can. I, I don't know that's deadly serious she's into, but She's a, she could do serious. You know what'll get her into it is the video game scenes. No, she doesn't. That'll get her into it. She's not a gamer. That'll get her into it. All right. Um, <laughs> Jessio says, would have been interested in seeing an adaptation of the three body problem, but not at this time and not ever from Netflix. Well, I mean, you're Wait, lost. Look, I would I'll, suggest, I'll watch the first that, three episodes. Yeah. Watch the first three and then decide. And also look, novels are different from TV shows and movies. They just are. I think Dune would have been better. Same production value, same cast, but make it for Max, yeah. right? 
I just, I love Dune. Yes, we lost some stuff by having Dune Part 2 be, you know, Dune Part 2 is what it is. Uh, the things that I miss are in the books. The third act is kind of rushed. They made one big change that kind of ruined the movie. Yeah. And I'll, um, I'll defend I'll defend Netflix by saying they'll have Dave Chappelle specials and Ricky Gervais, and then they'll have Hannah Gatsby. They're, they're covering both sides here. You know what? That's the way it should be. When I go to a convention, you know what? Have the trans Filipino comic creators. Mm -hmm. I love it. Cool. And everyone who wants to go to that can go to that. Have everything and talk ideas. But but what has happened in so many places, in entertainment, in book publishing, in production for TV, has been this weird, weird thing of you must have certain ideas or you are not welcome. Or you have to enforce certain ideas. You can't. You that's it. Enforce. Yeah. yeah. And, and from what we've talked to, from what we've heard from people uh, in the know, Netflix is probably a lot more open than any of the other studios. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not saying they're perfect. Not at all, but they're, they're more open to it, to, uh, to balance than any other studio or streamer. Yeah. It's, um, I just, I, I think that Netflix does have balance and I happen to know this Ted Sarandos, not, he's not super on the woke side. He's pretty based. He said a lot of things. Political. He's and, not a political guy. No, and they stood behind Dave Chappelle. They didn't fire him. They didn't take Dave Chappelle off Netflix. And the people who opposed his special and the jokes he told, they got to protest. Your voice was heard. Moving on. Yeah. And I like that. I like the um I like the exchange of ideas. I love it. I love it. So, yes, but but they have ruined IP. So they <laughs> yeah, that point. they have ruined some IP, and then there's One Piece. Look, I don't think this is why Netflix is the most successful st paid mm -hmm. streaming service. I mean, uh, technically speaking, YouTube has the most users and and streaming hours, however you count it. It just it does. But um, Netflix, you know, been a subscriber since they sent me the little envelopes. I wish I kept one of those envelopes as like a little memento. I kept some of those movies. Yeah, but then you'd have to pay for the DVD that it came in. Yeah, true. Um, not even Shogun says Darth Nugget. I haven't seen Shogun yet. I will watch it. We're um, I do have to subscribe to a certain service and pay money. And then what I have to do then is um I have to do that. <laughs> well, and, hey, um, WrestleMania is coming up. Uh I, subscribe I, for WrestleMania I, and I you'll get Shogun. Get, can I just get a deal? So I can just pay for the year. I did that and I had it for three years for kind of a cheap price. I just, uh, I'm just annoyed and I don't like commercials, but no, I will watch Shogun. And so in terms of what I've seen this year, it's the best TV show I've seen this year that doesn't include everything that's on. So yeah. Um, and, and weirdly they all start Asians. So uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, Doc Savage for five. Sorry. My internet blinked. I'll, Faux show give three body problem a shot. It does look interesting, which is why I hope that my negativity is misplaced. Just get to episode three and keep going. If if you if you're feeling it, Patrick Lemire says when Chris is and thank you, Doc Savage. Always appreciate your opinion, and you're welcome to be skeptical, skeptical and negative. Patrick Lemire says when Chris is super excited, I know it's it's worth it is worth a look. Yeah, I mean, it's just, I just, first of all, want to talk about it with other people because what the concepts that are introduced and the dilemma that is that is presented to humanity as a whole is so fascinating. I, I just, I just want to discuss it with other people. Alan, can't wait for you to see it. We will hold our review to right around the day that it comes out. But yeah, I can't. I just want to talk about it with people. Yeah. Oh, SLVR I was mistaken. says I was mistaken. Shogun is on Hulu, and not on. Did, no, no, that's what I'm saying. It's on Hulu, but you have to get the combo. No. I just, I hate yeah. all that. No, I get it. Yeah, yeah. Um, Shogun is so good. Um, oh, a request from Sean Hu. All right, fine. You read that. <laughs> Wear the film threat chain too, uh, and this is with your Caucasian shirt. 
Oh, should I? Yeah, that's what he's. That's what he said. Well, I, I thought he was saying like, "Wear it now." Okay. I just, well, wear it now. Grab it. He, yeah, he's saying along with the uh, Caucasian shirt. Okay, hang on, hang on, Alan. I'm just gonna show you this. It is a full chain wow. with a 3D logo of the Film Threat logo. It has to be. Yeah. Is it made from wood or ceramic? It's heavy. No, it's 3D printed. It has to be. I oh no, it's not. It's no, no, it is yeah, way no, too I, heavy I to only be three 3D printed. It is heavy, and it's like, yeah, um, yeah. Here we go. So it's pretty awesome. So Sean, who yeah. just for you? Um, yeah, I could wear that with the Caucasians shirt. Yeah, it looks good on you and uh, R two D two. Yeah, R two D two. Yeah, I got yeah. it. Alan, yeah. you have no idea how cool these are. Yeah, so, I, you're right. I have no idea how cool these are. <laughs> Sorry, Alan. Rock <laughs> Savage says, I can't wait for Alan to see it either. I love hearing Alan's takes. Yeah. So thanks, Rock Savage. Yeah. Me too. We may have a special guest on Friday, which might be Dante James, to help talk us through magical, the American Society of Magical Negroes, which, by the way, no one has bought a ticket for. They're literally, I bought, got tickets for Dante and I because I'm part of our, you know, the movie group with like, you know, get the, get the advanced tickets. And um, Dante and I are in a theater with five other people. Yeah, I think I'm in the same situation. Yeah, it's um, I'm a little disappointed, um, but yeah. Let me make sure I have my ticket. Yeah, there it is. Yeah, I I don't know why it's not in the uh, Dolby theater at my at my local. I can theater. tell you why it's not in the Dolby. Uh, but oh, thank why? you, Doc Savage. <laughs> um, Sean Hu says Alan is right. Wear it to the movie tomorrow. Okay, I will. I will. Because you asked me, I'll take pictures with Dante and I. Sean yeah. Who for seven forty two. You left before my super chat was read on the nooner. Because there were like a hundred super chats, I, and I had to do my show. So uh, you left before my super chat was read on the nooner, understandably. But I said new channel idea with Chris and Dante titled "Nerds in a Car." Um. So when so what Dante does? Dante lives in downtown um, L.A. He takes the train to my place in Pasadena. I pick him up and then the two of us drive to Burbank. There's no train that goes to Burbank. So uh, we, we basically carpool together and in the car, Dante and I are just completely uncensored. Like, Oh man, did you see the blah, blah? And we're just like, but it's like maybe a 20, 15, 20 minutes to get to the AMC Burbank from where I live in Pasadena. And um, the conversations we have, are just and then we get there and we're just like okay now we're at yard house we're in public we can't even say a any of the things that we talked about in the car like none I know. but you warned me several times we need to keep our voices down <laughs> no but it's weird when we're in public certain things i'm just like yeah we we're like it's just like and you never know people that are like and people make assumptions but they've never watched the film threat youtube channel so oh yeah I mean, I've told you what people have said to me about you. What do they say? Oh, it's like, well, a lot of it is, you know, because all of it centers around your association with the geeks and gamers and Gary and, and all that stuff. But you have an association with them. Sure, but I'm not as public as you are. But the other thing is, is like, I mean, I've always said this. Uh, the the left looks for traitors. The right looks for allies. Um, you know, as, as much as I've had problems with the right, uh, I've never felt... Uh, I've I've always been friends, and uh, we, and I've been able to disagree with my friends on the right, and uh, not so much on the left. You know, they'll they'll shut you down. They'll 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 ignore you. They'll unfriend you. Alan is cr Alan is on fire on Twitter. Look at don't do not don't, don't do not. not. I almost said do not do not <laughs> said, follow <laughs> Alan. He put well, you did put your pronouns in the bio. Beep bop boop. Um. But like my pal Al, and also where's your link to your link tree? The link it's not the there. Tree, the link uh, tree is not there. No, oh, I have it's it's fine. Thread thread. Fine. Um, I, I know, know what Alan's link tree is. It's um, my pal Al. My pal Al. Here's Alan at the Monkey Man premiere. Did you get to keep that little monkey man? Yeah, that was the ticket to the after party. But the movie started late and ended at 12 30 at night. Did you go to the after party? No, because I had to fly out the next morning. Yeah, look at this. Look at Alan's feed. 
Look at this. Oh, look at look at look. That's great. Yeah. Nick Cage. Nick Cage. All right. Well, I'm gonna look. I haven't watched look, all your Jesse videos. Jesse Heisenberg and a baby Sasquatch. I, I haven't watched all your videos on the members channel or the the members exclusive videos from South by. I have to watch them all. Yeah, I'm watch the uh, Fallout video and then watch the Paramount video. Oh, I love this. The yeah. the Godzilla. That is great. That is awesome. Winning Godzilla, winning the Oscar. A little Oscar. There you go. I love yeah. it. Love and 100 it. People made that video. So there you go. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Hollywood <laughs> people. Uh, well, that's going to wrap it up for us today. One last thing I want to remind people um, I, I, there's a mix up. We were going to have an interview today. The interview uh, got, uh, well, the interview got canceled. But two things I'm going to tell you about the party we're going to have in Vegas. One quick thing I, don't I want to remind you, speak your mind on Criticless. Go to Criticless, that's the word critic, L-E-S-S, dot com. Uh, it is a social network for your opinion about movies. You don't need to be a movie critic, but if you have an opinion about a movie, and most of you do, go to Criticless.com. Alan and I are there. I am that Chris Gore on Criticless. Uh, Alan is, what's your My pal, name? Alan. My, My pal, Al. So check it out. Entertainment review platforms don't have to be pretentious or boring. Art is exciting, and the forum where you discuss it should be too. Criticless is a new outlet allowing you to do just that. Review, share, and converse. Congregate with like-minded folks in a more creative, pro-free speech environment. Join the conversation at Criticless.com or download app stores today. That's pretty awesome. And so make sure you sign up for Criticless.com. I am there. Friend me. I accept all the friend requests and by the way if you have a youtube video channel a review channel uh they have links uh you can put links in in your uh reviews to that I wonder if we could start i'm going to talk to them i wonder if we could have a film threat presence on critic list you can't we can I, create a group a film a threat group, group. Oh, we'll start a film threat group so a bunch of our writers you know um aside from alan we've got michael mm -hmm. talbot haynes among others of our other of our writers have have uh their own accounts on there. So that's yeah, great. Odin is there also. And uh, Odin's uh, there. Think. Love Odin's men. Uh, but this is a reminder. I know that's a weird, <laughs> I look weird. I did not. That's You're Joey Fatone. <laughs> yeah. So for our meetup in Vegas, this is important. The meetup in Vegas is Tuesday, April 9th at the millennium fandom bar in Las Vegas starts at 7 PM. RSVP now, please only RSVP if you plan to attend. We have limited space. I'm giving away Blu-rays. I'm giving away film threat stuff. Uh, Alan and I will be signing things. I'll probably be wearing my chains. Be wearing my chains in Vegas, which is going to be cool. So check that out. Um, uh, we're going to have a lot of fun. Uh, and uh, it's free to attend. And it's so Tuesday is the film threat cinema con party. Wednesday is the fellowship meetup. There's an additional fellowship meetup on Thursday. And I do believe we're going to cross the streams. Myself and Alan X-ray girl and Gary will be together on one mega stream. We're going to combine Hollywood on the rocks with the nooner. We're going to stream on two channels at one time. Pretty awesome. Yeah. So watch it on the film threat stream. Yeah, watch it on the film threat stream. Give a we need the to get the stuff. So uh <laughs> Alan, I'm excited. Friday I morning, the American Society of Magical Negroes is gonna be a lot of fun. Alan, did I miss anything? How are you uh, recovering from South by? I'm sorry, what? How are you recovering from South by? I just got back in yesterday. I was exhausted. Uh don't ever fly into San Francisco airport. Uh, it is. Yeah. Was that your layover? <laughs> that was my layover. And they canceled my flight. Why? Because of construction. Uh, they canceled my my flight back home. Yeah. And so they had to put me on a uh, lift to San Jose so I can get home. Uh, oh, a few more chats here. Let me just say thank you to Matthew Hammond, who became a YouTube member. Matthew, what took you so long? I thought you were a member. We always see you. Love your comments. You add to things. And never been trolled by Matthew. Great questions. Um, Matt Bookish Bastard said, if Alan wore that chain, he could call himself Alan Bling. That's right. I could. 
Um, Flav says, as long as you promise no karaoke, karaoke has been banned from the film threat party. All twisted up says, where do we RSVP? If you go to, um, Ms. Peacock is going to share the link to RSVP in the description, share the link in the chat right now. And if you go to the community tab on film threat, I have made the link public. I had it for members only first for 24 hours uh get access so any members but it's in on the community tab those are three different places you can find it right miss p coffee yeah. cool thumbs and, up and only rsvp if you can actually go yeah please just like yeah if you're gonna be in vegas during it you're gonna be there on april 9th please rsvp i promise you it will be work worth it one thing i haven't talked about there is a huge announcement i'm gonna be making then yes I don't. I actually don't think you know what it is. I think you told me. You I told may me have. On, you may have. Yeah, I think you told me on Friday. All right, that wraps it up for us. Thank you to our mods, Lord Thoth, Mexican Iron Man, Ms. P. Coffee. She always leaves herself off. Why is she doing that? Why is she leaving herself off there? Why always? And Glenn, our producer, Glenn, the incomparable Glenn, the the. <laughs> Uh, I'm trying to think of, I, I have been sitting in a chair for six hours. <laughs> Live long and prosperous to Solomon Thornton. Hey, we appreciate you. Cheers, Lord Thoth. Uh, just thank you to everybody. We'll be back on Friday and it's going to be wild. And by the way, versus on Monday, we're going to have a very interesting panel on versus. Who's going to be there? Let's just say. A panel like you've never seen talking about the American Society of Magic. Who do you think is going to be there that you might A lot of pixels. That was the last person. <laughs> Yeti TV for five says, I'm pleasantly surprised. No ads during the stream. I was prepared to deal with it so Film Threat could have their, their revenue. Um, Lol said with love. We, I think we, we figured it out then. We're not this. Look, like I know about YouTube. I have no idea what I'm doing. Um, but I am grateful that I've been helped by so many amazing people uh, behind the scenes. So thank you for that. Uh, and there you go. But yeah, no, we're just, we, we're, you know what? We respond to you. You say you like, we try to, I think the only thing I was like, uh, we're still going to review little indie movies with the mainstream movies, kind of mix it up. That was like the only thing where I was like pushing back and saying, uh, I think we're going to keep doing, doing it that way. But thank you also to the 700 and, more than 700 people on Rumble right now. I appreciate you. And was there one last comment here? Eric July, Dante, Obama. That's right. Leo Cody. The cat's out of the help. bag. Actually, Leo, I need a video of Obama talking about the movie, The Americans, and I'll play it on Versus. <laughs> Thank you for that. Uh, could be some of those people. Could be some of those people. There you go. We're going to leave it there, folks. Uh, Alan, what do you have to say? Let's get out of here.